What's going on guys? I'm Rob Sigler. Today we're talking about compositing in Photoshop and I'm going to show you some very basic techniques you can use to make sure that all of the elements in your composite blend together seamlessly. Stay tuned. Today we're going to be making this composite and it's a snow scene we're going to have a snowy background and we're going to have a truck. And I'm going to show you some basic ways we can use check layers to make sure that all of the different elements we use blend together. Now check layers are layers that aren't part of the final composition. However, they help us see how the elements interact with each other. Let's dive into Photoshop. Before we start compositing, I like to keep everything organized in a folder. And here are the elements that we're going to be using today. Here is our snowy background. Here is the truck we're going to throw on that snowy background. I downloaded a lens flare that we're going to use on the truck's headlights. And I also have three snowy overlays. Now I found all of these on Envato Elements, which is a huge graphic resource for photographers and designers. However, there are plenty of free resources you can find on the web just like this. Now we're in Photoshop, we have our background opened up and we have our truck opened up. And with the move tool selected, I'm gonna select the layer with the truck and just drag it into our scene. Now, the truck is obviously a little too small. I could shrink the background so that I don't have to stretch and lose pixels. However, for this example, I'm just gonna drag the truck and make it a little bit bigger. The actual 3D element that this truck was is very, very sharp. So if we stretch it a little bit and it gets a little bit softer, it's actually gonna help it blend into our scene a little better. Now, we need to take this scene and figure out how to make the truck blend into the background. And this is where the check layers really come in handy. The first one we're gonna make is a black and white adjustment layer. And that's going to help us see if the foreground image is too bright or too dark. So under window, I'm going to come down and click the info button. And with the eyedrop tool selected, I am going to mouse over various parts of the image to see the values that we're getting. So if I mouse over the brightest part of the image, you can see the values are in the, in the low 200s. If I mouse over the darkest part of the image, you can see that the values are right around one, two, and three. So let's mouse over to the darkest part of the truck, which is probably down here by the wheel base. We can see the value is 10, 10, 10 as, comp as compared to one, one, and zero. So what we need to do is darken our darks a little bit. So I'm going to make a new curves adjustment layer, put it right above the truck, I'm gonna hold the Alt or Alt key down so that I can make a clipping mask and clip this curves layer to only affect the truck. Now I can bring down our shadows a little bit. Let's open up our Info tab again. And now when I mouse over, I can see that the darkest part of the truck image is right around nine, and the darkest part of our background is right around, around one. So we still need to darken it just a little bit. And this is a very unscientific way of checking the brightness values. There are other ways you can do it, but for today, I'm gonna to keep it really simple. All right, let's open up our info palette again. And we can see we are right around four, that's perfect. So now we have enough dark areas in our truck so that it will fit in with our background. Let's check the bright areas. I'm guessing the brightest area on the truck is probably this spot with the shocks or this spot with the headlight. And that's registering right around 2.30. We look at our background, it's right around 2.30. So I think we're good. Our brights in the truck match the brights in the background. The shadows in the truck match the shadow brightness values of the background. So I think we're gonna be pretty good. Now we can turn that black and white layer off. In fact, we can delete it because we're done with it. The curves layer, you can see darkens our truck a little bit and it actually makes quite a bit of difference and helps it fit in. Now we need to take a look at the saturation level. As you glance at this, you can tell that the truck is far more saturated than the background. But let's take a look at how to make a saturation check layer so that we can fix this. So what we're gonna do is come down and click this little icon 
and select Selective Color. Now, this has to be set on absolute values or this will not work. So make sure it says absolute and not relative. In the black, neutral, and white sliders, I'm gonna turn the black all the way up to plus 100%. In all the other colors, I'm going to turn the black down so it's minus 100%. Now, if this is something that you frequently do, you could always record an action to do this for you and it would save you some time. So what we're gonna be doing is creating a layer that is actually gonna show us how saturated our image is. There we go. Now, if we look at the image, the brightest parts have the most color and the darkest parts have the least color. So we can see which area stands out the brightest. Well, it's the truck because it's way too saturated. So we're gonna make a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna drag it in between the curves layer that we just made and the truck layer. And this automatically clips it to our truck layer. Now watch what happens when we turn the saturation down makes the truck completely black, which indicates to us there's no color in it at all. If I turn it all the way up, it will turn the truck white, indicating that there's a ton of color. So what we need to do is make the truck match the background. So we're gonna turn the saturation way down until we get gray tones in the truck that are matching these gray tones in the background. Now that looks pretty good. Let's turn our selective color layer off and you can see that automatically the truck is really starting to blend in. Let's turn on and off the saturation layer, and you can see that the colors are much more muted now, and the truck is starting to fit into its place. All right, we have one more check layer, and that is our color layer. We need to match the colors of the truck to the colors of the background. What we're gonna do is make a blank layer. I'm gonna hold down Shift and F5, which is the shortcut for fill, and I'm gonna fill this layer with 50% gray. So now we have this gray layer on top of our image. Let's change its blending mode to luminosity. So now all we're seeing is the color in the image, and it's a little bit hard to see right now, so I'm gonna click Hue and Saturation. I'm gonna turn the saturation all the way up. Now what we need to do is make a few adjustments so the colors that we see on our truck are matching the colors of the background. So instead of these orange and reds, we wanna shift them around a little bit till they look more greenish. And how do we do that? Well, there's a couple different ways to do it. Let's use for this our color balance adjustment layer. And I'm gonna drag that in between the other two adjustment layers we made. It will automatically make a clipping mask. Now we can slide in our midtones, highlights, and shadows we can slide these colors back and forth and see if we can get the colors to match a little bit better. Now I have to warn you, when you move the slider a little bit, it does a lot. So try to move these sliders as slow as you can. Now I'm just pushing the cyans to the left a little bit and I kind of like what it did to the tires there. It sort of blends them in a little better. Let's try our magenta and green, just a little bit towards magenta and look at the tires. It made them a lot bluer and it's matching our background. Let's look at the yellow and blue. Nope, don't wanna do that. And I think I will just leave those right at zero. Now let's edit our shadows and I'm just gonna slide these back and forth to see if they have any effect. I think I'm gonna leave the cyan at plus three. Push the green to maybe there. And look what happened when we pushed our yellow to blue a little bit. The tires really turned blue. And let's see what that does to our image. So I'm gonna turn off the hue saturation layer at the top and turn off the gray layer we made. And now look at our image. The truck really is starting to look like it's part of the scene. So we can delete these two check layers that we made. Now we've made a curves layer, which made our truck a little bit darker. We've made a color balance layer, which adjusted the color. And we made a hue saturation layer, which adjusted the amount of color that was in our truck. 
Now it's starting to look pretty good, but there's some things we can do to it to make it look better. First of all, let's make this into a night scene. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on the color lookup adjustment layer. And under the 3D LUT files, we're gonna select night from day. Now our image is much darker. It has a very blue moonlit looking sky to it. Let's add some headlights on this truck. So I'm gonna make a new blank layer. And with the polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to click on the headlights and just sort of drag out here, make a little triangle. And I'm gonna hit D so that our default colors are back to black and white. Hit X so our foreground color is white. And then option backspace to fill that with white. Now our headlight doesn't look very convincing right now. So let's fix it up a little bit. Let's go to Blur Gallery, and we're going to do a field blur on the light coming from the truck. A field blur allows us to put a point where we will put a little bit of blur and then tack on another point where we will put a lot of blur. Now look at that. That headlight looks much better. Let's hit OK. There we go. Let's add a little bit of glow to our headlight to introduce a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna select the FX button and I'm gonna click on outer glow. And let's choose a color. Let's try a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna turn the opacity up. I'm gonna turn the spread up, the size the range there we go sometimes you just have to experiment with the sliders until you see what you like we can add a little bit of noise to it if we want i think i'll turn the spread down so we're essentially just adding a little bit of yellow i think i'll make it a little more saturated yellow There we go. And that's starting to look pretty good. Now, instead of duplicating everything for this headlight, what we can do is hold down the option key with the move tool selected and bring our headlight over to the other side. And there we go. Now we obviously don't wanna see this black edge right here. So what we're gonna do on each of the headlight layers is make a layer mask. And then I'm gonna make a gradient to fade from white to black so that we fade the edges of our headlight beam. There we go. Now looks pretty good. Now here is a neat trick that I learned from Flern. Aaron Nace is an incredible Photoshop instructor. Let's make a blank layer with a small hard brush with white. I'm just going to scribble all over the place. We'll do a little variation in our brush size. There we go. This is gonna add a little bit of randomness to our light stream. Gonna go down to blur and radial blur. Gonna crank the amount all the way up to 100 and I want it to zoom, not spin. I'll click best quality and hit okay. Now, it, we did a little too much here, but it's easy to mask off. We're gonna hit the layer mask button. And with a black soft brush, I'm just gonna paint away the parts we don't want. And we can turn the opacity down just a little bit. And there we go. Now the lights would obviously be lighting the front of the truck a little bit and the ground a little bit. So let's make a new blank layer, and with the marquee tool set to the circle, let's draw a little circle right here, and let's make a new curves adjustment layer, and let's brighten the ground. Now I'm gonna blur the layer mask by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm just gonna turn that up until it really 
blends into the snow. There we go. Let's make another blank layer and with a white brush, maybe 20% opacity, I'm just gonna tap the front of the truck. Let's make it a little smaller, just to make it light up like it would if it was really lit. We can light the snow a little bit more if we want. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go back to our truck for a minute. Obviously, if the front of the truck was up in the air, the wheels would be in motion. So we need to add some blur to our wheels to make it look like they're moving. So I'm going to duplicate the truck layer and I'm going to come up to Blur Gallery and select Path Blur. And we'll start the blur there. We'll bring it down. There we go. Gonna hit OK. Now I'm gonna put a layer mask on this blur layer and I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option when I do it so that it automatically fills the layer mask with black. Now with a white brush, I'm just gonna color over the tires so we have some motion in our image. There we go. Awesome, let's put a lens flare in on our truck, on the headlight, give it a little bit of added oomph. So let's put our lens flare at the very top and I'm gonna change its blending mode to screen. I'm gonna drag that right on the headlight. And there we go. Starting to look pretty good. Now let's add some snow because you wouldn't drive a truck like that unless it was storming out. So let's open up these snow overlays. Perfect. Now it's obviously a little bit too much snow so I will decrease them. And then finally, let's crop our image just a little bit so that the truck is more centered. That looks good. I can come up to the top layer, press Shift, Alt or Option, Command and E, and that will make a stamped layer on the top of everything that we've done. Now to unify, there are two things we can do. We can add some grain to the image. So under Noise, select add noise and we'll add a little bit of grain maybe five let's try that that looks pretty good and one final thing i want to do and that is add a gradient map and let's select one of these with blue in it and then i'll change the blending mode to soft light just to add a little bit more blue to our image. And there we go, there's our final image. So just to review, we put the truck into the image, we made some check layers, we made a brightness check layer using the black and white adjustment layer, we made a saturation adjustment layer to adjust the amount of saturation, and we made a color balance layer to adjust the colors so they matched. Here's our final version, guys, I hope you like it. If you learned something new today, please subscribe and give me a like and a comment. We'll see you in the next video.